All right. So we're going to visit with uh, Bonnie uh, today. We're going to do a session. Bonnie's dealing with macular degeneration. And as we've, as I've discovered with conversations with her before this session started, there's a lot of emotional issues behind it. Okay. So I'm going to add Bonnie here. Say hello, Bonnie. Hello. Wow. Okay. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Good. Um, okay. So we were talking before, Bonnie, and, and um, you have gone through loads of therapy in the past, EMDR and a whole long list of other things. I mean, talk about that a little bit on your various, not necessarily your vision, but the traumatic issues in childhood. Yes. So talk a little bit about where you've been so far. Well, um, I, I guess I started trying to heal myself after I got sober. I know I started then. And that was some 40 some years ago now. Um, I started seeing a therapist in San Diego, which is where I was living, and, and continued uh, in the Latin, uh, throughout the next 40 years. I have been doing one form of therapy or another. And that was. That was an indication to me on how much emotion can really mess up your body. And I had never thought about it in terms of my eyes until recently. And then when I began doing um, um, the work this last week with the unseen therapist, my vision deteriorated again. It just became much worse. Yeah, we were, we were talking about that before we started this recording and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that before, and it isn't that unseen therapist causes that. Rather, it is, and it's actually good news, in that you're seeing that the, as you start getting into your very intense traumatic memories that are not resolved yet, despite all the therapy you've done, as you start to get in them, the emotional intensity starts to affect your eyesight. I have that right? Yes, that's exactly right. So you read my book, The Unseen Therapist. You have not dealt with any of our advanced materials, taking our our advanced courses or anything. You've just started with the book. The book has at the right. end of I it. Have, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I have taken classes in EFT, but that was several years ago, like 20 years ago. Um, yeah. And I've used it off and on, but not, not exclusively, obviously. And okay. uh, I just read the whole uh, Unseen Therapist again here. Yeah. All right, good. All right. That has in it a personal peace procedure, which is sort of a beginner's look at how to do this. The actual courses we do and so on, they, so on get into more advanced stuff. OK. Yes. And so you have you have very challenging issues. Uh, I asked you, although I don't know the details before this recording uh, about where they may have come from. And you and you told me, as I suspicioned. Uh, they came from a abusive, traumatic childhood, yes? Yes. Okay. In general terms, for now, the, uh, the abuses involved, were they verbal, physical, sexual, all three, what? Uh, verbal and physical. No sexual abuse in my childhood, no. Okay. And, and, and did it come from um, parents, siblings, neighbors, someplace else? It came from my parents and my uh, siblings. Actually, it was my mother. I realized this. In fact, she even told me when I was 31 that she never wanted me. Uh, okay. She never wanted me. And she, and she showed it all throughout my childhood. I was treated differently from my siblings. And I was very aware of that. Uh, but I, I, I attributed it to my wrongdoing of course that i was there was something wrong with me that she treated me the way she treated me but her okay. favorite way was it to make me invisible and whenever mama disciplined me like that just ignore me i mean i just became invisible to her then i became invisible to everybody in the family i could sit at the table with them and and say please pass the potatoes and nobody heard me because i wasn't there and everybody treated me the same way that mama treated me. 
Okay. And when mama was there talking to me again, then the others would talk to me. So that was her favorite way of coping with me. Are you the first child, middle child, last child? Number six out of eight. Okay. Fifth daughter. Okay. Last daughter. All right. Well, when you grow up, this is my view, but you see, you have to always correct me because I know very little about you. I, I'm going to take what you've told me and I'm going to put it together and open some doors and this kind of thing. Because we're going to do a session to get you started on all of this. Okay. Okay. Um, but the kind of the, the it isn't from our, our approach. It isn't really what happened. That is your mother abused you ignored you, your family ignored you, you were invisible, that kind of thing. It isn't what happened that's, that's the important thing. It may seem that way, but that's not the real important thing. The really important thing is your response to it. What does that mean to you? See, we can't change what happened. We can't change what mother said or didn't say or, or whatever as time went on. And she tells you at age 31, she didn't want you and this kind of thing. We're not mm -hmm. going to be able to change that. What we can do, and do it elegantly, although it may take some time, we're going to get started on this, is to change your response to it. So you're free of it. Oh, well, that was, I mean, it's a nice academic statement, Bonnie. Like, like, Right. Oh, oh well, that, that that's just her view. I mean, that's a nice academic statement. We could say that <laughs> we could agree on that, but but emotionally, you see, that's it's, it embeds mm -hmm. differently. Right, right. So let me let me ask you. I mean, we've been talking about your emotional responses, and we'll get into those more as this progresses. But logically, logically, is there something wrong with you? No. <laughs> I mean, well, other than no, the fact that I'm having problems with my eyes, yes. Okay. Well, we all have issues in this world, okay? Yeah. Yes. But but is there anything particularly abnormally wrong with you? Okay. No. In fact, well, I think I've, I've coped very very well throughout my life. Yeah. Okay. But the emotional response is different because you'll get into your issues as you told me before we recorded and you're in tears instantly in fact you wrote me yes. an email about that okay yes which means despite all the work you've done on it they're not really resolved at least that's the way i see it that's right that's okay. the way i feel yeah okay all right so one of the things that's important here when we deal with the unseen therapist in the spiritual the spiritual realm is that it, and a lot of people don't don't really realize this, but the unseen therapist, God, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, or whatever higher power or whatever name you want to give to it, isn't going to sit around and change your beliefs for you. They're not going to say, oh, Bonnie, you know, that belief you have there, well, you can't have that. You got you, it's not good for you. You, you got to have this belief. Not going to do that. Not going to do that. That is an unloving mm -hmm thing to do that is actually the thought police okay right, so right. so you may have a lot of beliefs that got embedded from your mother siblings etc um that are still kicking around and unseen therapist is not going to come and say oh we'll take care of this belief but not that one no no, no. not going to do that what we're going to do you and i are going to do is we are going to work for a little while before we ever bring in unseen therapists Okay. And we're going to put some stuff on the table. We're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to, in, in psycho-speak terms, we're going to do some reframing is what's involved. We're going to start to look at it, look at it maybe through different eyeglasses, look at it a little different way than, than maybe you've seen it before and so on. We want to put a lot of this on the table. Then okay. when we finally bring an unseen therapist, there will be more there and we'll see how well we see how well we do. Okay. So you were in our conversation, okay. in our conversation, Bonnie, you were zeroing in on your mother and your siblings. I didn't hear your father in there anywhere. Was he a player in all this? Yes, but uh, in a different way. He was the threat 
<laughs> that mother kept, you know, hanging over us like a Damocles sword. You know, he was the punisher, the punisher. But actually, I really related to my father. My father was fair. He never treated me differently than he treated the rest of them. And I was very aware of that. My mother was the one who treated me differently. Okay. Well, while, while father may have some important input here, um, this is a get started session. So we're going to get started. We're going to get a good start. And we're going to deal with your mother unless you tell me otherwise. Okay. Does that seem right? All right. That seems yeah. right. Okay. Now, it's not, remember, it's not your mother. It is your response to your mother. The response response being, uh, if, if I get that right, uh, I'm not wanted. There's something wrong with me. I don't count. And mm -hmm. let me back up a second here. There's an important foundation in all of this. When a young child, and correct me if you think I'm wrong on this in your case, okay? When a young child is given the message by a parent that there's something wrong with you, you're not lovable, I don't want you, you don't count, et cetera, et cetera, the child tends to believe it because this comes from an authority and a love source. This is correct in your case? Yes, yes. Okay, all right, good. Mm -hmm. What happens, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just speak technically for a minute. There's young Bonnie with all these beliefs about herself, which are not logically true, by the way, as we've discussed, okay? But they are emotionally mm -hmm. true. And what, happen, what happens then is that any doctor will tell you this. I've act, I can't tell you how many doctors I've asked about this. Uh, and they all agree with it. That is, when you're having negative emotions, something's wrong with me. I'm angry about this. I'm humiliated about this. You know, I'm fearful about this and, and so on. When you have those things, you send, you create, your system creates a cascade of negative chemistry in your body. Your adrenaline goes out of balance. Your cortisol goes out of balance. You know, uh, 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 hundreds of repair mechanisms and chemical equations go out of balance, okay? And your immune system has to now take care of that. It, if it didn't, you'd be in big trouble, okay? But there's mm -hmm. only so much of the immune system and it can only do that for so long. And after a while, physical things start to show up like macular degeneration, vision problems, and other diseases and things that people get. It includes cancer. It includes every, every one of the thousands of diseases that medicine has put labels on. My heart problems began about the same time as my macular degeneration. Okay. I have well, a pacemaker now. Yeah. Okay. We see it over and over and over again. Unresolved emotional issues show up physically eventually okay so what we want to do is start taking care of those unresolved emotional issues and we're going to start with mother all right so i i i want to get as much on the table as we can to be to begin with here okay so let me ask you about your i don't know your mother um but i've had many 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 conversations with people who have mothers who are seemingly similar to yours critical, doesn't want their child, maybe. Lots of different issues they have on their own. Let me ask you, would I be correct in assuming that one of your mother's greatest needs would be love? My mother's greatest needs? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Would I also be accurate in assuming that her need to be critical, her need to respond to you in the way that she did in all these abusive ways would be because she has unrest within herself and doesn't really know what to do with it. Yes, a lot of unrest. I think the woman was terribly uh, stressed all of, the, all of the life. I mean, she worked so hard. She grew up on a farm. I mean, she worked really hard 
all the time. And she had eight kids, for Christ's sake, you know? Yeah. And she had a lot to overwhelm her. Yeah. Well, I'm bringing that up because one of the things, if we're going to collapse this well, is we have to put on the table and recognize that uh, the source of these traumatic issues that you have, being your mother, isn't that something's really wrong with you. Rather, mother has her own unrest from her own upbringing, her own abuses, and so on, and doesn't really know how to handle it. I see this so often. And so rather than work inside or look at what's going on in here, what she and many others do, your mother, your mother would not be alone in this, is they tend to project it out. It's like it's unrest here. I got to blame something out there, the outside world. Oh, how about Bonnie? Okay. Um, and you happen to be the target. Yeah. But the real issue is nothing is yeah. wrong with you. It is your mother's inability to handle her own issues. Now, I don't want to, I, I don't want to impose stuff on you. Am I on target? Yes, you are. Uh, they were on the verge of losing the farm when they found out when she found out she was pregnant with me. Oh. It, it was a very hard, traumatic time for them, and uh, she did not want another baby. You know, no way, no way. Yeah. So. So would it be your view that all during the pregnancy, your mother was going at some level? I don't want this child. I don't want this child. I don't want this child. Yep. Absolutely. All yep. right. Well, that's it. Okay, good. We got to put that on the table because one thing we know from medical science is they've been able to put sensors on mother's pregnant belly and they know that the fetus, the embryo, you inside there, pick up mother's stuff. If she's arguing with somebody, you pick it up. If she doesn't want you, you pick it up. Are you with me? Yeah. I, I absolutely, I had a, a regression session with a, 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 a hypnotist that I really trusted. And he took me back to the womb and I actually heard my parents arguing over. She wanted to, to get an abortion and my father wouldn't agree to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. All right. So again, and we're speaking academically now, we want to get to a point where it's not just academic, you really get this, an unseen therapist is going to help us do that, okay? You have nothing to do with this. You, you are the result of a, of a happy erotic moment or two, and that's, all, that's only, and you didn't even have anything to do with that, right? <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Well, it's true. I'm glad you're laughing because cause that means my little reframe. <laughs> Well, I was just thinking I when I went to a very small school, 25 kids in my graduating high school class, and there were four of us that had the same birthday. And I <laughs> at our 25th reunion, one of them came up to me and greeted me as his birthday buddy, and he says, We both know what our parents, how our parents celebrated New Year's Eve, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. But the important thing for this conversation is that you have nothing to do with that. Okay? Right. And right. your mother not wanting you because of all the pressures of the farm and you know, all the financial pressures and whatever else is going on in her life, her own hard life, her own inability to mm -hmm. not resolve things and kicking around in there and so on. You have nothing to do with that, but you end up being the target. Yeah. Now, we're going to go from, we're going to switch from there to specific events, which you read about in the book, The Unseen Therapist, correct? Yes. Um, in the book, I describe at some length the idea of specific events. Specific yes. events are, are the things that, are, that actually happen in your life. They have emotional crescendos in them. They are underneath, you know, how you respond in current time we want to go back to those specific events and unload them that's the point okay yeah so well, you have what go ahead i i started that list i've got you know quite a number of them written down but i can't think of anyone where i, I specifically thought who do you think you are okay <laughs> well that's just one i picked up from something that, that you said okay but 
Do you have that list handy, by the way? Right here. All right. Pick one out of that list, unless you and I work on it. Well, actually, it was the very first one that I, I worked on, but I, I, got a, I got some results from that. And that was my very first memory, actually. It's the very first memory I had. I was still in the crib. And, uh, and my parents were right next door. I was in a crib in their bedroom. There's a transom, an open space in the wall between the bedroom and the dining room where they were with uh, some friends that come over. And they were visiting and having a good time and laughing. And I had a younger brother already. And my mother had come and taken him out of his crib because I knew she was feeding him. She was nursing him. And I wanted to be with all of those people. I didn't want to be in my crib. And I started crying. I wanted to be taken up, you know, taken out. And nobody came. And I just cried and cried and cried and cried until finally somebody came in there. I don't remember who it was. I think probably my father. But somebody picked me up in the crib and pulled my diaper down and just wailed the bejesus out of me, spanked me so hard. And then told me to shut up and go to sleep and tossed me back down in the crib. And I remember lying there just crying and crying and crying and crying until I fell asleep. And all I remember about that is it, the feeling of it doesn't matter how much you cry. They're never going to pick you up. They're never going to pick you up. Right. Now, let and me that feeling, what? Go, no, go ahead. That, that just... That stayed with me all my entire life, actually. I've, I've found it very difficult to cry when, uh, when hurt physically or emotionally. Uh, I immediately would shove the tears down. I would not. That was just the way of getting more uh, abuse if I, if I cried. Oh, yeah. And so that was something I've done all my life. Yeah. All right, now I want to feed something back to you, and, and you need to instruct me on this. You were telling me before we ever had this recording, um, in an email and other, otherwise, you would go through some of these events, and you would be in tears instantly, big time yeah. tears. Okay, now, yep. I just asked you about this one event, but it's an event you worked on with Unseen Therapist, and you just, yes. you just said it, like it was a walk around the park. Yeah. Were you getting intense about it as you said it, or was it just that's just what happened? No, that was the interesting thing. That one that one time, the very first time I worked with the unseen therapist, I had an emotional response before when I wrote it down. My emotional response was 10. I was very aware of that. And I was also aware I talked about that particular incident with therapists innumerably you know, over the 40 years, but I still had that emotional response to it. And after I did the, went through the video with you, you, your video, and I did the whole thing, you know, closed my eyes and called in the therapist and the response was zero. I couldn't get over it. Just that oh. one time. Okay. I didn't okay. have that emotional response. All right. Fabulous. We're going to go a little bit further, but I want to cover something with you first, if I may. Okay. If I understand your story correctly, you didn't have just one or two specific events. You had maybe hundreds, maybe a thousand or something. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And so one of the conclusions people tend to make is, oh, my God, I got to go through this for hundreds of events or a thousand. Oh, exactly. There's not enough time in the, time in, in four lifetimes to do that, okay? That's, no, right. no, no. That's what I kept thinking, yep. Okay. Yep. The, I got some good news for you. <laughs> okay. <I'm glad. laughs> With, within our process, there is something built in that is called the generalization effect. What that means is this, while you may have hundreds or multitudes of these specific events, many of them are grouped like 
mother events, things mother did, said, etc. whatever, okay? Siblings would be another one, and school might be another one, or things like that, okay? okay. You, you told me er, at another point you had a marriage issue, okay? That would be another one, all right. So, the good news is, while there may be hundreds in each of those little groups, let's just take mother, for example, you only need to do 5, 10, 15, maybe 20, and do them well, and do them thoroughly to completely collapse mother issues, if you will. Because That is a wonderful thing to hear. Well, <laughs> It's a wonderful yeah. thing. Well, listen to the logic of it for a minute. Those specific events have commonalities in them. Similar people like your mother, similar tones of voice, similar topics, similar responses by you, similar, 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 similar. And so after you do 5, 10, 15, 20 really well, it generalizes. Let me say it a little differently. We have a metaphor that I call the tabletop and table legs. Let me give it to you. Here's a tabletop, okay? A tabletop is supported by a lot of table legs. Okay? If you remove the table legs, tabletop falls, okay? Now, right. a tabletop, from our getting to our approach for the moment, a tabletop might be my, my mother's abusive ways, okay? We could call that a tabletop, all right? And it is... It is supported by all these table legs, all these specific events in your life, okay? Where mother said this, did that, whatever. Okay. Okay, all of these, okay? And there are hundreds of them, okay? Great. But if we do 5, 10, 15, 20 of them well, um, your, video, your video just cut off. I hope you're going to come back. Tabletop, table you legs. You told me about the tabletop and all the specific events, which were the legs. That yeah. was the last part I heard. Okay. And one of those one of those okay. table legs was this one you were talking about in the crib. That's a table leg under the tabletop. Okay. 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 A table leg under all your anxiety. It's, act, it's, act, it, it's a contributor to your eyesight. Okay. It's a contributor. One table leg. All right. So you okay. dealt with one table leg and you dealt with it well. You, okay. Instead of being a tenant in tears, you talked about it like it was a shopping trip. So anyway, we've dealt, you dealt on your own with one specific event. Okay. And you had mm -hmm. success at that. Okay. Let's you and I yes. take another specific event. And we'll deal with that one as well. And we, to get you started. Okay. So tell me another specific event that is bothersome to you. Well, my sister, who was uh, next, my, the sister next to me in age, she was four years older, just hated me. <laughs> the one I worked on was, uh, and, I, and I just started, I couldn't finish it, I, I couldn't finish it, was when she hit me with a broom once, when I was like eight, and she was like 12. She picked up a broom uh, in the barn and and whacked me. It just swung that stick as hard as she could and hit me in the kidney. Oh my God, did that hurt. And I pulled it away from her. I grabbed it and I pulled it away. And then I had the broom and I could hit her. And I could not bring myself to do it because I knew how much it hurt. And she just sat there. She stood there and laughed at me, just laughed at me and then ran away. And all I could think of was that she just hated me. She just hated me. It was just, it was like, uh, I can't, it just wasn't anything I could do about it. I mean, there wasn't anything I could do about it. She just hated me, and I didn't know why she just hated me. So I'm hearing, yeah. the, I'm hearing the tears, but I want to put an emotion around that. I'm not hearing necessarily anger. What I'm hearing is, but you tell me, I'm on target or not. I'm hearing powerless. Yes, yes, absolutely powerless. Yes. Okay. No way to ever get away from that. All right. As you were telling that story on a scale of zero to 10, what, uh, what number would you give that intensity? You were starting to cry, but were you at a 10 or? 
No, about an eight, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. So if I get if I get it correctly, she's hitting you with the broom. She was you, one huge whack. I mean, just okay. oh my okay. God. Now remember what we're looking for here is not what happens so much as your response to it. That's what's important. Yeah. Okay. Because we're not going to change the fact that she hits you with a broom. No. Okay. So is that the crescendo moment? She's hitting you and you're feeling powerless? Or did it come later when you had the broom and you were going to hit her? It was actually when I hit the broom. And I realized that, well, one, I couldn't hit her because it would hurt her so much. I knew how much it would hurt. And yeah. I couldn't do that. And and uh, and I knew she'd do it to me again in an instant. She'd do it again in an instant. Didn't bother her. All right. Got it. Let's do an unseen therapist session on that specific event. All okay. Right? Okay. And by the way, I'm picking up uh, uh, your your estimation of an eight might be a little low. I don't want to impose it on you, but. Seems to me if you really got into it, you could get it to a 10. Would I be correct? It's possible. Let me turn off my radio. Okay. So this may be a little shorter, but let's go give it a try. Okay. So okay. if you would close the eyes. Close the eyes. We've already invited unseen therapists. We don't need to go through the invitation process. Okay. She's here. She's listening. She's heard the whole thing. She understands more about it than you and I ever will. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is represent, we're going to represent your emotional response to this, this powerless feeling in there. What can I do? if I don't want to hit her because it'll hurt. But she hits me and I'm powerless and she'll do it again. All that is power. We're going to call that powerless. And we're going to represent that metaphorically, Bonnie, as a unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Now, you don't have to actually create a vibration around your heart. We're just going to imagine it that way, okay? And that represents all this powerless emotion. Unseen therapist understands all of this. And she looks and, and knows you don't need to still carry that around as an adult, which is what you're doing. It's costing you, okay? It's a yesterday event. That, again, is your sister's unrest within her, right? just like your mother's unrest within your mother. Right? Similar kind of thing. And so she sends a nice, in your imagination, a nice, gentle, healing, cooling breeze coming from her towards you, enters your body, surrounds your heart. And that unwanted vibration just can't survive. That powerless feeling cannot survive in the ultimate love, the ultimate healing love of the unseen therapist. And so in your imagination, the unwanted vibration in the heart goes ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. And we're going to do that again. Represent the powerless feeling. This is unwanted vibration around your heart and your imagination. Ta-ta, ta-ta, ta-ta. Here comes the he cooling, healing, loving breeze. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. And do that again now, Bonnie. And take whatever time you want to repeat that. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. And just keep repeating it until you've gone as far as you can go, however far that may be. Again, no grades. You don't have to get an A or a C or just whatever happens, happens. And when you're done, whenever you've got, gone as far as you think you can go, just open your eyes and, and we'll talk. Okay. 
All right. All right. Oh, okay. So when you were doing that, were you having any competing thoughts or other other thoughts come up or or no, what I was seeing was what had happened at that time, which was after she stood there and laughed at me, she ran away and hid. That's what she would do. She would run away and hide so I couldn't find her. But I was just watching her this time. I didn't I wasn't feeling anything, you know. You were watching her run right away. Yeah. yeah. Well. Don't let me impose thoughts. Uh, this is, but I want to ask you, were you watching her sort of objectively no longer involved in it? Yes. Yes. I didn't have that sense of um, loss and, um, and powerlessness. Well, all right. Do this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm a great one for testing, okay? Because I never want to be fooled by what could be a temporary result. Okay? That's not professional work. So... If you would, we're going to test. Close your eyes for me. Go back to that event. There she is with the broom hitting you, and you're going to hit her back, but you can't. You feel powerless. And oh no, you know, run that movie with some vividness in it, and tell me if what happens. <laughs> it's, it's really. <laughs> It really doesn't have any feeling much anymore. It's like uh, just, uh, she just ran away and that's okay. But so I'll All do right. something else. <laughs> All right. Now, chances are, this is my experience speaking. Chances are that particular specific event, um, we're pretty much done with it. That table leg under your tabletop probably not going to be a problem anymore that contributor to but there's more contributors okay right right but but that table leg under your tabletop probably not going to bother you but but this is important really important tomorrow morning when you wake up run that movie again you want to test it again you okay. don't want to be fooled by a temporary result okay? okay a lot of people who do EFT out there think they get a quickie result and uh, <laughs> it's not always that way. So okay. if you get some intensity tomorrow, what is really important is you recognize where that intensity is coming from. Chances are it is not coming from the powerless feeling. It may be coming from anger at something within that. It may be coming from maybe you shifted an emotion of, to guilt. I, I'm making this up. But other, other, we call them aspects. Other aspects show up. At another time, but we didn't put anger or guilt on the table with unseen therapists, did we? No. And actually, no. what I was thinking was, I didn't feel a sense of loss, and that I didn't mention to begin with. But that's what I felt about my sister when when I realized that that I didn't feel that loss. That was what I always wanted was a relationship with her, yeah. and it was a loss that I didn't never had that. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay, now a, a larger picture here, Bonnie, is you, you may never have it. Is she still living? Yeah, she's okay. She's still, right. <laughs> she's still my bit war. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, but it's an important piece. You still may never have this relationship that you want with her. It right. could be because that relies on her resolving her own issues. Right. Which and you is, don't have much control over that. No, 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 no. I know. Okay. Yeah. So what we want to try to get to, and this is where the real freedom comes in, and this is all very possible, Bonnie. The real freedom comes in from getting the idea that the ultimate love isn't something you try to get from out there. You don't try to get it from your mother or the world out world outside or a lover or your sister or any, anything else. We tend to do that as humans here in the separated world. We try to get it from out there somehow. And of course, everybody else is trying to get it from you as well. Okay. Uh, very true statement, by the way. Um, when we start to recognize that ultimately that love is within. Now, that's an academic, nice academic statement. You know, it, it rings well and all that. But we want to actually 
own that idea rather than have a, isn't that a nice academic thing to say? When you own that idea, now you're free. Your sister can be whoever she's going to be. You can still love her. You can accept her. You can understand her. You can forgive and, and, and all of that. You, it's you that gets the freedom. When you don't have the freedom, and believe me, everybody running around without freedom, okay, one way, shape, or form, me too, I'm still working on all this myself, for, for myself, but the more freedom you get, the less cause there is for heart issues, macular degeneration, and other physical things, okay? Now, we've just begun with that, but you did one of these things on your own, the crib thing. Mm -hmm. You and I did one, and you end, well, you and I did one, you ended up laughing about it, mm -hmm. okay? So, and, and I will tell you what we've spent the last, whatever it is, hour or something doing this. That's the equivalent of six months, a year, more of conventional therapy. And in fact, in your experience, conventional therapy hasn't done it. That's right. That's right. Okay. So there you go, my dear. Do you have any more questions? Because this is a start for you. And now you've got the book to go back to and you can get advanced training if you want to. All that's up to you. Okay. But, but we got, we got you started down the road. Oh, I'm so grateful. I am so grateful. Thank you so much. I'm going to continue with what uh, I've been doing the list. I will continue with that. I want to know if I can skip around chronologically throughout my life in the list. Um, yes, but there's one thing you want to you want to remember. It's pretty important, and that is the farther back you go in time, that is the earlier in childhood, the more foundational it's likely to be. Okay. Now there's a there's a segment. This is our advanced training. If you ever want to go there, but there's a segment about having to deal with things in the womb. And from what you and I talked about, there may be issues in the womb. You That would be very foundational, okay? Yeah. Um, and that might be worth doing as well, okay? So, yeah, skip around if you want to chronologically, but always, always remember, the further back in time, the more foundational. Okay. If, you're, if you start with something at age 36, for example, because somebody did something and you didn't like whatever it was. Okay. Your, or your marriage, for an example, that's, that's further back in time than childhood and issues there. Chances are those issues are bouncing off of something clear back in childhood. That's why they, although the issues in marriage may have been exactly. standal mm -hmm. standalone, difficult by themselves. Chances are they were more exaggerated because they, bounced off of something before i was very aware of that i yeah i my husband was very much like my mother yeah okay or treated me as my mother did. yeah all right okay anything else you want to go over well i'm sure i'll think of a million things as soon as i don't talk to you anymore <laughs> <laughs> well give give me give, give me an email give me an email okay okay <laughs> i all will right. do that yeah all right Big gratitude to you, Bonnie, for sharing your story. I'm sure it's going to be helping, helpful to a lot of people. I hope so. I really hope so. And oh, thank you so much. But I'm just, I feel hopeful again. All really right. hopeful. Thank All you. Right. Good. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Next time. Okay. okay.